Let's take a look at some charts on Stellar, the latest article for Brave New Coin. And right off the bat, I'll say that XLM is the most popular ticker. However, Poloniex uses the ticker STR. You'll see that later on in the video in case there's some confusion. So these are the market caps of all the top 10 coins. Link isn't in here because it, uh, for some reason, turns off on trading view every once in a while. But it's between Stellar and Tezos the last time I checked. You can see in general, Tezos has followed this group of coins, ADA, TRX, XMR. I mean, there's Huobi token in here as well, Leo. So there's a few other like strange exchange tokens that aren't quite cryptocurrencies per se. I mean, they are, but they aren't. They're, they're in their own category in my mind, sort of a rebate token. But I digress. Point of these, these charts is just to show that a lot of this stuff is extremely correlated and just moves in packs. Doesn't necessarily have a mind of its own, regardless of the developer team, the charting, the fundamentals, any of that stuff. It doesn't really matter because it all just moves together. I mean, it's pretty clear. The correlation here is one, you know, 100%. All right. If we look at the supply, which, which is the blue, and the asset holders, which is the yellow, in general, both have increased. So with airdrops through Coinbase, blockchain.com, Keybase, they've tried to give this stuff away to as many people as possible. Even with minting 100 billion tokens and trying to give this stuff away, they still ended up burning 55 billion tokens. So the circulation's a bit wonky. You know, they have an API for it. They say there's 28 billion in circulation or some thereabouts. It was hard for me to track down, sorry, 20.2 billion. It's hard for me to track down like where's the other 50 or 30 billion sitting who owns it is it locked up is it vested like i don't know the exact specifics of all that stuff but i wish all of these projects would wake up and realize that people need to know this stuff <laughs> whether it's link whether it's bat i mean people need to know how many tokens are circulating what's the plan here what's going on because <laughs> you know i'm not going to buy anything that has 50 to 100 billion tokens circulating thinking that it's going to hold a store of value that's my billion token rant uh this is xrp versus stellar transaction fees now if you know anything about jed mccaleb he started on the xrp team and went his own way started stellar which is very similar to xrp some would say a brother a sister a cousin perhaps um bottom line here though is that the transaction fees have been much lower than XRP basically since inception of, of Stellar. If we look at transactions per day and average transaction values in general ac across any coin as transactions increase, average values decrease, mainly because as, as uh, transactions increase, this represents assets instead of currency moving. So like crypto kitties or nfts stuff like that dApps. so you'll see on a feeless chain which essentially xlm is you'll see transactions increase in the millions which is what we are at now for stellar you'll see average values below a thousand usually this big spike is when they moved and burned 55 billion tokens so it's hard to really fully embrace the bullishness of this chart because of the feeless nature so if a chain is feeless who cares how many transactions are on it because it can just go to infinity it doesn't necessarily represent economic value it's certainly more bullish than bearish uh, looking at nvt which is an inverse measure of economic utility and daily active addresses the fill here so you can see when they had inflation and they had staking rewards they get paid out every so often, every week, whatever it was. Since then, basically been flat. You know, it's returned to 2018 levels of daily active addresses. Not something you want to see if you're super bullish. You can see that NVT has decreased all-time lows in the beginning of the year. So, again, if you're bullish on economic utility and activity, and you look at NVT, this is a massive buy signal for you. Another thing I'd caution, though, is that NVT for Stellar specifically has been the highest value out of anything you know if you compare all the nvts for all the, like the top 50 coins for some reason stellars has always been plus a thousand you know or higher it's only recently come down 
to below 500. And if you look at BTC, like an NVT above 100 is, is crazy. That means it's just way overvalued. So again, it's hard to really gauge what's going on here from this these metrics specifically. All right, let's look at the, the technicals. My favorite part, look at the 50 and the 200 EMA, the red and the green here. That just represents 50 days and 200 days averages. If we're above those averages, we're bullish. If we're below it, we're bearish. For the past, I don't know, 400, 600 days, it's been below these key averages. It's been unable to escape the gravity of the 200. You can see it attempted and just immediately smacked back down. This is VPVR, the volume profile of the visible range. Now, again, this is Poloniex. So I go back and forth. You know, do I want to show Poloniex charts where I know users are gone, have been gone for years? It's going to skew all the volume profiles. Or do I want to show Binance charts where I don't have all the price history? So I could merge these together, but I just show the, the Poloniex ones because I have more price history, volume history, etc. So this volume profile is probably not completely accurate. It was probably more more volume on other exchanges in other areas that makes more sense just because if you look at this you know it's been dead since 2018 <laughs> i mean it went up it went down and then just flatlined but what this is showing is uh down to 17 cents 17.5 there's a lot of sorry not 17 cents 0.175 um there's a lot of volume support because there's a lot of volume here if we look at rsi there's no bullish divergence, so we didn't we didn't have a lower low in price and a higher low in RSI yet. However, RSI did hit an extremely low level, typically representing the high likelihood of a bullish reversal at some point, just because it's so oversold. Now, if we look at pre-2020, it was that low, and then pre-2019, it got that low. Here's where you get your divergence. You can see you get a lower low in price, a higher low in RSI. It's subtle. If you don't zoom in on it, especially in the RSI part, but that's what you look for. And you can see immediately after that, you know, I had a nice little little run, a little itty bitty run. So far, we don't really see that here. This is the cloud. I am cloud master race, and we can see we've been below the cloud basically since we've been below the 200. You know, since 2018, it's basically been just completely bearish. You had this really nice setup here for a potential like triangle thing ended up breaking down also had a fake out uh, on the cloud here which you don't see too often you know it was above the cloud here it's above the cloud here just has not had any bullish momentum whatsoever when it needed it uh, so right now as it sits it's pretty far down below this red line which is the key june typically represents oversold conditions again echoing rsi here it's probably going to pull up before it makes lower lows if it does make lower lows if it does make lower lows i'd expect it to tap that 017 level where that VPVR zone is. Now, if we look at the XLM or STR BTC chart on Polo, Polo again, you can see since 2018, volume just gone. Uh, there's an insane amount of volume support immediately below the current level. So just looking at that, I don't expect this to break you know, 400 sats, for example. If it does break 400 sats, it's gonna be quick. It's gonna be a wick, super hard rejection, most likely. It's not gonna be just down, 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 pain, you know, Zcash-esque sell-off month over month. Just because there's a lot of interest here previously, there's probably going to be a lot of interest there again. That would represent a two-plus year low. So even I'm a buyer at that level is all I'm saying. All right, so if I look at any other chart in a vacuum and I see this, you know, ranging stuff, I'm thinking, is it a pattern? Is it a trend? Is it Bollinger Band squeeze? It's kind of none of that here. So there's this other option, which is called you know, Wyckoff accumulation, Wyckoff distribution, another type of charting method. Another thing I'll just mention is the RSI. You're continuing to get higher lows here. Even So this isn't exactly a bullish divergence, but it's better than continual death with, with uh, just nothing happening on RSI. All right, so if we look at this again, you know, we're below the cloud, we're below the 200. It's got some wacky ranging stuff. Is it possible to have Wyckoffian accumulation? I just like saying the word Wyckoffian. But if you map this out, if you Google Wyckoffian accumulation or Wyckoff accumulation, you will see a stereotypical pattern very reminiscent of this. It's not exact. It's not perfect. But I like it enough to be confident in representing this information. So what I'd expect next is, you know, you get these 
support tests, and then you get a support failure with a massive rejection if this thing is going to survive, right? So this is the 400 sat zone. You get this spring, this massive wick it goes back into the support, and then it starts, you know, it's it starts moving its way up the chain here. And then eventually you get back to this resistance where you had your higher high, and you make this ascending triangle or bull flag, some sort of markup thing, and then it breaks. In this case, it would be 950, 1000 sats, something like that. This is what I'd watch for in the next few months. I don't, this is the, what is it, six hour chart, something like that. Probably not going to happen overnight, but it's something to watch for. So your most bullish chance at anything is above 900, above 1000. That isn't rocket science. It's breaking local highs. You know, that's what you want to see. You don't want to see it breaking local lows. The other thing you'll notice is, oh, it, it's, it'll be above the 200. It'll be above the cloud. So it'll match all this trend stuff as well. 